Hi, Mark Spencer here from Ripple Training with a couple of tips on how to use the 8 and 16 point mats from Ripple Tools. First of all, to find them, you want to go to the Titles browser in Final Cut Pro 10 to the Ripple Tools category. And there we have the 8 and the 16 point mats. I'm going to be using the 8 point mat in this example. The 16 point the 16 point mat is exactly the same, it just has twice as many points. Now, the first thing to know about these mats is uh, unfortunately they're not animatable. You can animate the overall position of the mat, but not the individual control points. And this is just due to a limitation of how Final Cut Pro handles control points. So what I wanna do, I have a video clip here, and instead of uh, matting the video, I'm just gonna take a still frame. So I'm gonna take this particular frame because it has an area in here that will be kind of interesting to work with. So I'm gonna select the clip, and with a playhead on the frame I want to create a hold frame for, I'll use the timing menu and create a hold frame. Make that a little bit longer. So now we have a hold frame here. I'm gonna select this little hold frame segment to set a range. I'll select the eight point mat and press the Q key to uh, bring in this title effect to exactly match the duration of the hold frame. Of course, you can trim this to be as long or short as you want and change its position. I'll select it, and in the viewer, we can see the eight points around the edges of the mat. Now, one thing you may want to do as you adjust these is sometimes you need to drag them beyond the edge of the frame, and uh, especially down here. In this case, it's really not necessary, but what I want to do is zoom out a little bit. So you can use a little pop-up menu here, or you can just press Command minus, and that allow us to kind of pull these out beyond the edges of the frame easily. And I'm gonna move that one over because we don't need an extra control point down there. And then I'm gonna move this one way over there so we can kind of get an angle coming in uh, by her hand, maybe a little bit like that. And then I'm just gonna kind of arrange these roughly where I wanna mask uh, this image. All right, maybe something like that. I'll hit Shift Z to fill the frame again, and then I can get a little closer and build my original mat. Now, that's a starting point. Uh, the next thing I want to do over in the title inspector is to make a few changes. First, I should just mention there's some quick tips here. You can always turn these on and you have direct access to some information on how to use this uh, Ripple tool. So you don't need to go watch this video, but uh, I'll cover a few extra things in here. Uh, there's a roundness slider that will make these points smoother so they don't have these hard edges. Well, we still have hard edges, but we don't have these hard angles at the, each corner. And you can go higher. The slider only goes to 50, but if you drag right in the value field, look, I can make this really pretty uh, darn smooth. I don't want to go too smooth, but you can you know, make it very, very, very smooth. So I'll smooth it out. And then I'm going to bring some of these maybe a little closer now that I've smoothed it out. I'm going to get fairly close. And the other thing I want to do is add some feather to the mask, because obviously I'm not going to be able to perfectly mask her. I just want a sort of gentle mask. I can feather in or out, actually feather in a little bit. And again, you can go beyond the slider limits by dragging in the value field. So you really have a lot of flexibility here. And then now that I've done that, maybe I'll pull this out a little bit, and pull this out a little bit. And sometimes you want to cut into your subject a little bit, not to show any background. Sometimes you want to do the opposite. It really depends on what you're trying to do here. But let's say that gets us pretty close to what I want to do. I can always invert the mask to take a look at how much I'm masking with the feathering there. But I get a pretty good sense of what I want to do. So um, once I've got that done, what I can do is add a background. So I'm going to enable the drop zone by clicking the show drop zone checkbox, click in the drop zone well, and then I need just to choose something from the event browser. So I'll choose this clip here, say apply clip, and there we go. Now I might want to adjust it once I've done that a little bit more. And if these aren't enough points, you can always use the 16 point mat. This doesn't work too bad for this image. Now, but what I want to add is notice this area in here. I really actually would like to cut another hole right here to reveal the background. Now what's kind of cool about this, uh, this eight point mat and the 16 point mat is you can add multiple copies. So what I'm going to do is again, select the hold segment select the eight point mat again in the titles browser, hit Q, and now I've got another copy. I'll select it, and the key here is for this other copy to set it to invert, because now it will do the opposite thing of uh, the original mask. So I just want it to cut a little hole down in this corner. Uh, 
and let me give it some feather and some roundness. And then I'm going to add the same drop zone. Show drop zone, click the drop zone, add that same background to the drop zone so it shows it through here. And then I can adjust uh, kind of what I want this thing to look like over here. And, you know, I'm just going to be a little soft because her, her hair is back there, but I can kind of get a rough feel for it there. So the basic idea is you can add as many copies of this as you want to add eight points each time. And you can do the same thing with the eight point or the 16 point mat. That's the basic idea. While we're here, I'm going to mention something else. Um, let's say you had a background um, instead of the drop zone. What I'm going to do is turn off the drop zone for each of these for a moment here. Turn off that, select this one, turn that off. And let's instead take this guy and make it as a connected clip. So I'm going to move the playhead back a little bit. I'm going to hit Q so it's a connected clip. Make it go across this hold frame and drag it below. Because you may have set things up so that the connected clip is actually below. And you'll notice that, and this is true with all these Ripple uh, tools, the this, it's done as a title and it's affecting both this image of the woman, the video, as well as the image below. And uh, the way to deal with that where you don't want that to happen, and actually explain it in the quick tips here, is that you select the top two and make a compound clip out of them. Now normally you can just go ahead and use a drop zone. You don't have to do that. But if you have something in where you really wanted this thing to be in the project, you could select these guys here, choose File, New Compound Clip, and I'll just call it uh, green screen. Okay, and that way uh, you can see that she is now masked and the background is not masked. Now the only thing is this background in the spatial conform is set to fit and not fill, so I'll fill the screen. And uh, now we've kind of got what we want. The only disadvantage of this approach obviously takes another step and then you would need to um, open this back up if you wanted to adjust the mask. So you would need to break apart the clip items or you could double click on this to uh, adjust the mask points and fix it up the way you wanted and then go back to the overall um, project. Okay, so those are a couple of quick tips. Let me see if there's anything else I wanted to mention in the inspector here. No, I think we got it all. Okay, uh, that's it. Thank you for watching.